Now today we are here. Now I have with me Dr. Arvind, Dr. Achin. You know them, famous medicine faculty members. And today we are going to discuss in the Medicine Unplugged series that uh, we have started to create integrated videos. Today we are going to discuss a patient with acute confusional state. And I will now invite Dr. Achin to start with the case presentation and uh, discuss the various uh, differentials and help us to evaluate such a patient. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, let's take a case history regarding the patient that we found ever in the ward with an acute confusional state. Uh, here's the history. Uh, the patient is a 40 year old male, uh, chronic alcoholic, and he was brought by relatives in the emergency with history of altered behavior, irrelevant talks and a fever for last one day. As we uh, try to see in the history that we are somewhere seeing a person who is uh, having an altered behavior. In a past history what we would find that the patient was an alcoholic, that is a substance abuse that he was going through and a short history of fever might have precipitated a problem. Let's move on further for the further examination. In the general examination what we could find the patient uh, had a heart rate of 45 per minute and a blood pressure of 160 by 100 millimeters of mercury and a heart rate of 45 per minute suggests of bradycardia and a high BP. So uh, something which can correlate clinically in a central nervous system disorders, they have got bradycardia with hypertension could be a sign of raised ICD well known as a very famous Cushing reflex. On the further neurological examination as we could find that the patient wasn't oriented to time, place and person and the neck rigidity important sign which is a sign of the meningeal irritation happened to be absent while his lateral gaze palsy was seen and a pupillary sparing. Uh, that somewhere becomes clinically relevant that there is a lateral gaze palsy that we could not abduct the eye, uh, maybe a sixth nerve palsy again somewhere taking us towards the central nervous system a raised ICD and most important thing in the end his planters were bilaterally extensors and the deep tendon reflexes that we could elicit to check neurologically the patient happened to be brisk. Now just to sum it up somewhere, uh, I could find that the patient had an extensor planter on both the sides and reflexes brisk that suggests of an upper motor neuron lesion, maybe a cortical lesion and more often a diffuse lesion. So we are somewhere dealing with a patient who is having a neurological illness which is a diffuse and a cortical problem. Okay, let's see. Seismic examination uh, shows ictrus with hepatomegaly. So uh, that means ki, uh, this uh, ictrus could be the reason for this patient's uh, deteriorating neurological condition uh, like uh, patient can be having uh, hepatic encephalopathy, metabolic causes uh, because of chronic alcoholic abuse. Uh, CVS and respiratory system examination were uh, normal in this case. Uh, now we can uh, just look upon the differential diagnosis that we can uh, somewhere place on the examination of the history that we have got. Uh, the first foremost could be infections. Infections which are systemic infections uh, which are spreading all throughout the body starting from an idle source and could be a central nervous system infections to be more precise about like meningitis, encephalitis or maybe a brain abscess somewhere. So we can think of an infective etiology second most important could be the drugs of abuse since the patient was an alcoholic he might have drank a lot of alcohol it may be a case of alcohol intoxication withdrawal and may precipitate a vitamin deficiency b1 causing on to an acute problem which is known as a vernicase encephalopathy uh, metabolic uh, condition differential diagnosis we can keep for uh, acute confusion state as uh, electrolyte uh, imbalances like hyponatremia or hypernatremia but uh, history will uh, should suggest that there should be any cause of hyponatremia like uh, dehydration, diarrhea or hypernatremia means free water loss should be there uh, but that is not given in our uh, case history. Uh, hypoglycemia we can keep uh, but uh, there is no history of any oral uh, uh, anti-diabetic medications or any insulin use, no history of diabetes. Uh, so we can rule out the hyperglycemia in this case also. Uh, but of course, we can also keep uh, the diagnosis of hepatic encephalopathy, uh, patient uh, uh, chronic alcohol abuse uh, in the examination, ictrus was there. So th these are going in favor of hepatic encephalopathy. 
another cause of ictus in these alcoholic patient could be the hemolytic anemia due to alcohol like uh, acanthocytes so we should uh, keep a strong possibility of uh, this differential diagnosis in our patient of course uh, uremic encephalopathy can be there like uh, uh, cirrhosis can lead to hepatorenal uh, syndrome uh, where patient can have renal failure with subsequent uh, uremic encephalopathy so these will be our uh, differential diagnosis in our mind so uh, to uh, uh, rule out the possibilities and make a correct diagnosis uh, we need some investigations in this patient so the uh, basic investigation will uh, send the blood sample for electrolytes uh, that will definitely rule out a case of uh, uh, hyponatremia or hypernatremia we'll get a blood sugar done uh, though patient is not uh, diabetic or uh, there is no history of any insulin use still we uh, should uh, do the sugar test because in cases of damaged liver like uh, hepatitis uh, one can get hypoglycemia because of decreased glycogen reserves so uh, we should keep the, uh, we should send the sample for sugar also yes of course liver function test will be vital in this case uh, along with the kidney function test to rule out any uremic encephalopathy and in this patient uh, electrolytes sugars liver function test uh, liver function test slightly shows uh, elevated bilirubin uh, but uh, enzymes were normal uh, kidney function tests were uh, normal in this case then our second line of investigation will be to rule out the infective uh, pathology of the brain uh, like uh, meningitis or encephalitis so for that uh, we should go for a csf examination the results in this patient shows a uh, normal CSF uh, examination. So uh, in a sense, we can rule out the infective uh, pathologies like uh, meningitis or encephalitis. Also neck rigidity was not there in our patient. So that goes slightly, uh, it will not be uh, meningitis. But remember, neck rigidity absence does not rule out meningitis. They, we will not get neck uh, rigidity in cases of immunocompromised patient or in cases of elderly patients uh, with uh, meningi uh, meningitis. Then uh, we'll take the help of uh, uh, imaging studies and uh, this uh, imaging studies will be uh, the uh, MRI studies uh, to make a uh, correct diagnosis. Now, uh, this patient was then uh, referred to us for MRI and uh, here MRI has a very set of very interesting findings. Now when you look at this MRI in front of you, you can see on one side you can see the midbrain and you can see hyper intense signal this is a flare MRI image you can see hyper intense signal around the tectal plate you can see there is abnormal signal around the third ventricle on both sides and if I change the section you can see hyper intense signal around the mammillary body so if I summarize you can see symmetric abnormal signal around the mammillary bodies around the tectal plate around the aqueduct around the third ventricle so this set of findings is very typical for Wernicke's encephalopathy. So uh, MRI has helped us where you know the clinical diagnosis had a lot of differentials but uh, CSF was normal and then MRI could give us uh, direct findings. Just to add on here had it uh, been herpes encephalitis which is uh, which has a very typical MRI appearance so I thought I'll add an image of herpes encephalitis here. So if you see the arrow marked areas are showing a asymmetric bilateral involvement of the limbic system involving the mesial temporal lobes and there is also involvement of the subfrontal area this is very typical of herpes encephalitis so based on the radiology we kept the diagnosis of Wernicke's encephalopathy first now I'll ask uh, Dr. Achin how, how would you treat such a patient uh, see uh, Wernicke's encephalopathy is a disease which occurs due to deficiency of vitamin B1 that's known as thymine and it is very often acutely precipitated in people who are drinking a lot of alcohol. Uh, alcohol intoxication happens to be one of the foremost reasons that alcoholics happen to have it. But most important, people who are starving, uh, people who are vomiting can also develop this. So it's not exclusive an alcoholic problem which we see one case in our ward. So uh, next time when we see somewhere a patient who has come with an acute confusional state and maybe has got some abdominal surgery done, and the patient is maybe on a rise to kind of a feeding we can suspect this kind of a disease in them as well uh, as Arvind has said uh, most important thing in the clinics that we need to see in a patient is to look on the biochemical parameters like the sodium most important uh, we do find electrolyte abnormalities like hyponatremia most commonly in our hospitalized patient and they may come with some kind of a altered sensorium that's again important 
and uh, somewhere if we take back into this patient the patient in our history had a some way suggestive signs of a uh, lateral rectus palsy and uh, that's important because the Wernicke's encephalopathy is a disease that is defined by a global confusion with ophthalmoplegia and of course the ataxia and a very famous triad that we know as Goa triad. Uh, Goa is part in our country that's uh, important for s a holiday destination so you can just uh, relate the alcohol with Goa this time with uh, disease that's Wernicke's encephalopathy. Anyway, uh, it's in medical emergency most important thing so we need to replace thymine now how does the thymine cause all this problem uh, thymine is an important cofactor for various enzymes that are required for the glucose metabolism intracellularly like the alpha ketoglutarase like the pyruvate dehydrogenase so since there is thymine deficiency the glucose could not be utilized which the cell got and this excess glucose caused a lot of mitochondrial damage intracellularly that was the cause but the most important thing in that patient is to replace thiamine approximately 100 milligram per day intravenous till the patient starts eating on their own then we can supplement with the oral most important thing to remember that the glucose infusion may precipitate the Wernicke's encephalopathy since you already know the main problem was due to the glucose excess within the cell causing a mitochondrial damage so if you give glucose infusion first before thiamine may it may create a big big problem for us so, so it's is uh, Achin, would you summarize your take home messages from uh, the treatment and the overall case? Uh, yeah. Can you summarize? So, uh, dealing next time with an alcoholic patient who had a past history of alcohol abuse or maybe a dependence on it, has come to our hospital uh, with signs of altered sensorium that defines an acute confusional state. Uh, first, most important thing apart from the investigation that we may be sending in the ward that will take time to come back to us the most important thing that we need to administer thymine to all of them and some way that we may require in them prior to the parental glucose infusion so it should always be a clear fact in our mind that it should be thymine first followed by the glucose okay so that's the important no, take home so message uh, here we have worked up a case who presented with acute confusional state and then we worked on with the differentials with the experts and we talked about how the imaging works and how MRI brain could add on value so, so that is the entire purpose of this unplugged series to create an integrated approach because often when you present cases in your wards in hospitals undergraduate sometimes gets a feeling that it is uh, people are working in isolation but in a real hospital we are all working as a team so that is the purpose of these videos. I hope you appreciate and you enjoy these videos. For more such video, I would advise everybody to follow us on Dams Daily channel on YouTube and search for Dams Medicine Unplugged hashtag on your search list. We will keep on making more such videos in future as well. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Unplugged. Thank you.